Okay, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, I guess I can't really do that right now, but I, I should look at that. Uh, which number was that? Okay. So it's just a problem, you think, with how I interpolated it in the solution? Okay. Okay. All right. Any other homework questions? In the new assignment? Okay, yeah. Oh, so I, th I think that's one of the problems that I went back later and said to ignore, right? Uh, yeah, that is, I said I got it from a table. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's one way to do it. Is that the way I did it in the solution to use that, that formula for monatomic gases? But I said, okay, so, and then there's also a table for, a, there are tables for a few different gases if you treat them as ideal that are given in, you know, textbooks or whatever. Um, and uh, so if you, if you find one of those for, I think it was nitrogen in that case, right? If you find one of those for nitrogen, you can just look up the values that, you need. So those are two different ways to approach it. Um, but neither one is one that I talked about. So let's just skip that now and forever. And uh, I'll fix it for next year. But yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other homework questions? Okay. So uh, we've been talking about um, the first law for control volumes. And so far, uh, we've talked about nozzles and diffusers. Um, and with nozzles, if that's the direction of the flow, uh, you start out with a high speed. No, you don't. I guess you could start with a high speed and end with a higher speed. Um, you start with a low speed and end with a high speed. And then because of the relationship between pressure and speed, um, you start with a relatively high pressure and end with a low pressure. And diffusers work the opposite way. So if the direction of the flow is like that again, you start with a high speed and end with a low speed. And therefore, you start with a low pressure and end with a high pressure. And um, I gave you a bunch of assumptions that you can make often with nozzles and diffusers. Um, 
mathematically it's all sort of the same thing. It's just a matter of what your where your uh, inlet is and where your exit is. Um, um, but the simplest uh, form of the first law for control volumes uh, came out to be you have a difference in enthalpies, inlet specific enthalpies, inlet minus exit, and that's equal to one half of the quantity speed at the exit squared over two minus speed at the inlet squared over two. Okay, so um, the basic function of um, nozzles and diffusers Um, the idea is that your uh, you're exchanging enthalpy speed. Okay. <clears throat> and there'll be some problems you'll do where you don't use this most simplified form, but that's always kind of the underlying idea. Um, but you have to go through and um, figure out the assumptions based on what's been in the problem. So the next thing we're going to talk about is turbines. Um, and the idea of a turbine is, so here's the turbine itself. Uh, it's a wheel with fan blades on it. And, um, The fluid flows here and here, and it hits that fan blade, and um, it turns the speed of the fluid into work, or it turns, you know, the kinetic energy of the fluid into work. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You still wouldn't have what? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's better. Okay, and then the so the fluid flows, hits the fan, uh, creates work, and then exits. Um, Um, <clears throat> often this is used with steam, and um, I think a lot of people have sort of a the idea that steam uh, steam engines are sort of like an old fashioned technology, but it's really not true. Steam turbines are used in you know, the highest tech nuclear plants, it's just you're using the nuclear uh, reaction to heat up the steam. So this is a, you know, it's still a very current technology approach. Uh, here are the 
common assumptions that we have with turbines. <clears throat> Um, the first one is we usually assume that it's in steady state. And so if we're using the first law of thermodynamics for control volumes, um, the first thing that that does is it says there's no difference between the mass flow rate at the inlet and the exit. Um, so m dot at the inlet is equal to m dot at the exit, and we'll just call it m dot. You know, there's just one m dot. And the second uh, thing that it does is it says that there's no rate of change of energy inside the control volume. Um, the second assumption that we usually make is uh, that it's a relatively fast fluid flow. And um, because of the fast flow rate, uh, there's no significant heat exchange compared to the, the other, um, compared to the other energy terms. The third one uh, is that, so there's the speeds at the inlet and the exit are gonna be different in general, but the difference in the speeds is not going to be big enough to compare to the other terms. So this term we're just going to ignore. It's just going to be relatively small. And then the last one is uh, usually changes in height aren't going to be a big thing in a turbine. And so um, this is usually going to be ignored too. Okay, so uh, if we look at this, um, if we start with a full equation, so we have d dt for the control volume is equal to q dot minus w dot for the control volume plus m dot for the inlet times the quantity h inlet plus v inlet squared over 2 plus G Z inlet minus M exit dot times the quantity H exit plus speed exit squared over two plus G Z exit. Um, steady state says that the EDT goes away and it says that mi dot is equal to m dot and me dot is equal to m dot. Um, there's, we're gonna usually ignore the heat transfer, so that goes away. Um, we're gonna usually ignore the kinetic energy and the potential energy contributions. And so we end up with an equation uh, that says W dot for the control volume is equal to M dot times the quantity 
H inlet minus H exit. Okay, so that's the simplified, the most simplified form, the just basic idea of how a turbine works. Um, this is the simplified first law for control volumes, turbines. And notice that what it says is it exchanges um, enthalpy for work done by the fluid. Okay, so you have a relatively big enthalpy at the inlet, relatively small enthalpy at the um, exit, and you get a positive value of W dot, which means that you're producing work that then you can use somewhere else to you know, power an electrical plant or run an engine or whatever. Any questions about that? Okay, let me do an example for a turbine. Okay, so let's say we have a steam turbine. And let's say that the mass flow rate is 4,600 uh, kilograms per hour. Um, and at the inlet, let's say that we have pressure of 60 bar, temperature of 400 degrees Celsius, and a speed of 10 meters per second. And then at the exit, uh, we have a pressure of 0.1 bar. Don't know the temperature. Um, we know the speed has increased as the pressure has decreased. Um, so the speed is 30 meters per second. And um, it's steam at the, uh, at the inlet. At the exit, it's a mixture at saturation. And so the quality is 0.9. Okay. Um, so first, using the simplified turbine model, Um, let's figure out what's the power generated. So that's W dot CV that we're looking for. Um, and then next, so now we're not going to use that most simplified model. Now we're going to assume that if you measure the power output, so, so now we're not going to use that simplified model. Um, we're going to say that the measured power output is uh, 1,000 kilowatts. And we want to know um, what's the rate of energy
that's added to the control volume by kinetic energy And actually now, so let me sort of clarify this. Uh, now that I think about this, I don't, we're not gonna, so for B and C, we're gonna sort of be ignoring the simplified model. We're gonna figure out how much energy is added to the control volume by kinetic energy. And then for part C, we're gonna use the first law for control volume again. And, um, Again, we're not going to use the simplified model. Um, and the idea is if we know that uh, W dot for the control volume is a thousand heat loss. Okay, so why are we going to, I mean, partly this is just, you know, like all these examples, it's just getting used to where the different terms go and whatever, but partly what we're doing in B and C is we're sort of checking a couple of the, for, for some uh, realistic values of these, of these properties. Um, we're sort of measuring, calculating how realistic it is to just throw away the energy contributions of kinetic energy and throw away the heat loss. Okay, we're gonna measure these and uh, hopefully they're gonna be small contributions compared to the rest of it, that's the idea. Okay. All right, so first for part A, our simplified model says, uh, W dot for the control volume is equal to M dot times the quantity uh, H inlet minus H exit. So what do we know? Um, at the inlet, we know that we have the pressure of 60 bar and the temperature is 400 degrees Celsius. And we know that no matter uh, what state this steam is in, whether it's saturated or superheated, that's enough information to just look up the specific enthalpy. So we can just look that up in a table. Um, and it looks like the way I have this written down, it looks like uh, those are values that just pop up in our table, it didn't take any interpolation. So looking at the table, uh, we have that the enthalpy at the inlet is 3177.2 kilojoules per kilogram. <laughs> uh, that's the superheated steam table. <clears throat> okay, so now we have to do it at the exit, and we know it's going to be more complicated because we were given a quality, which means that some of it's liquid, some of it's gas. Um. So at a pressure of P2 uh, equals 0.1 bar, we can look this up in a saturated uh, water table. We 
we have that for the liquid, um, so one HF, the one for the liquid is 191.83 kilojoules per kilogram. And for a saturated gas, it's 2584.7 kilojoules per kilogram. So how do we figure out the, the actual enthalpy at the exit based on those values? Yeah, so uh, we know that then uh, total H at the exit, total specific H at the exit, uh, is equal to 1 minus 0.9 times the um, specific enthalpy for the liquid, so times 191.83, plus 0.9 times the specific enthalpy for the gas, 2584.7, And you get a value of 2345.4 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, in order to figure out what we're trying to figure out for part A is the uh, power that's produced. So we're looking for W dot. What we need is M dot and the two specific enthalpies. So we're almost there. We just need to get the um, the rate of mass flow into a set of units that match with the rest of our units. So M dot is given as 4,600. It's given as 4,600 kilograms per hour. And if you convert that, you get a value of 1.27 repeating uh, kilograms per second. And so now W dot is equal to 1.27 repeating times the quantity uh, H at the inlet. We got that somewhere, okay, 3177.2. And remember that the units of energy we're using here are still kilojoules, so I don't know if I'm gonna put it in SI units, I'll write it like that. Now it's in joules per kilogram. Uh, minus 2345.4 times 10 to the third. So now we have both of these in joules per kilogram. And you get a value of negative 508 uh, watts. Oh no, that, that doesn't make sense. Uh, you get a value of 1062. So 1062.9 times 10 to the third, uh, and that is in joules. Okay, so it has to be positive because uh, we're using the turbine to produce work and that's what the sign convention says. Uh, a positive value of W dot is work that's done by the system on the surroundings. Yeah, joules per second. Uh, joules, so this is joules per kilogram. This is uh, meters. Yeah, that should be joules per second. Watts.
Any other questions? Okay, so now for B and C, um, given that these are all realistic values, so given that all the values used above are realistic, um, how good are the assumptions that we make in that simplified model for a turbine? How good are these simplifications? And we're gonna check two things. Uh, so we're gonna measure Um, the kinetic energy contribution and we're going to measure Q dot and we're going to see if those if it's reasonable to treat those as zero as negligible. Okay, with me on what we're doing here. Okay, so the first one, part B, uh, we're gonna calculate the contribution for kinetic energy. So um, we're going to, let's see. So what is, the true contribution from kinetic energy change. So we want to calculate m dot times the quantity v inlet squared over 2 minus v exit squared over 2. We don't have to go back to the first law for control volumes to do this because we just have all those values. Um, we know that VI is 10 meters per second. Um, we know V exit is 30 meters per second. It might seem a little strange at first that uh, uh, fluid is moving faster after it goes through the turbine than it is at the beginning. But remember, there's a huge change in pressure between those two. Um, at the inlet, there was a 60 bar pressure, and at the and that that pressure is forcing that turbine to move. And at the other side, after it's gone through the turbine, the pressure was 0.1 bar, and so that gas is going a lot faster. For the same reason that we had that in the nozzle and you know, that relationship in the nozzle and the diffuser last time. Uh, high speed is low pressure and vice versa. Okay, and then the last thing is we know that M dot is 1.27 repeating kilograms per second. So M dot times VI squared over 2 minus VE squared over 2 is negative 508 uh, and that's if you do it in watts uh, oh um so remember you know this is going to come out in watts and that's something you have to be careful of uh, so be careful with your kinetic energy and potential energy terms. Um,
the units that you get for calculating these will almost always make these come out in watts, okay? Uh, if you use the values from the tables for the other terms, you're going to get stuff in kilowatts and kilojoules. Um, okay, so like look up here at this calculation. I converted it. The values that we got out of the table were in kilojoules per kilogram, okay? If you just use the values that are given in the tables and then use the values to calculate kinetic energy terms and potential energy terms, you're probably going to have a unit mismatch there. Okay. Any questions about what I'm talking about there? Um, okay, so if you compare these now, uh, you can see what the difference is. Um, the work that was done by the turbine was uh, a little over a million watts. Um, so W dot was about equal to 1 times 10 to the 6 watts. Um, The kinetic energy contribution was about equal to negative uh, 5 times 10 to the second watt. So um, if you use you know, three significant figures to represent this, that kinetic energy contribution still wouldn't show up. You know, so that's. That's why, uh, it, you know, in this example, it's very reasonable to just throw away those velocities. Just don't even worry about it. So to ignore the speed change. And then the you know kinetic energy contribution. Any questions about that? Okay, and then for part C, uh, we're going to imagine that. So when we did this calculation with the most simplified model for the turbine. We estimated that the work being done uh, would be, you know, about uh, one million uh, sixty-two thousand. So now let's say that we actually measure the work output. And let's say that it's a thousand. So uh, 62,000 of those watts out of over a million watts, 62,000 are lost somehow. Um, and so the question is uh, what's the heat loss. Okay, so let's put this whole thing together. Uh, what we have is, um, so the simplified model, well, let me just go all the way back to the first law for control volumes, and we'll just cancel out the stuff that, that we're still ignoring. Um, so we have D D T for the control volume is equal to Q dot, question, uh, minus 
W dot for the control volume. Um, plus M and what's well, yeah, I'll do the whole thing. M I dot times the quantity uh, H I plus B I over two, B I squared over two plus G Z I minus M E dot times the quantity H E plus V E squared over two plus G Z E. Now what are we gonna get rid of? Um, we're still gonna ignore potential energy. Um, we're still gonna ignore, uh, you know, we're still gonna assume it's steady state. So D E D T is zero. M I dot is just M dot and M E dot is just M dot. And now we can fill in stuff as we know it. Uh, we're trying to find Q dot. What's W dot for the control volume? A thousand, right. So that's the measured value. Um, the mass flow rate is 1.27 repeating, and that's uh, the, let me put this all together like, so we can combine all these terms. Uh, so we have 1.27 repeating times big quantity. Uh, first, the difference in the enthalpies, which was when we measured those enthalpies, um, we got a difference of, well, I didn't calculate that. Uh, so let's say 3177.2 times 10 to the third minus uh, 2345.4 times 10 to the third. Plus um, VI squared over two minus VE squared over two. Um, so that is 10 squared over two minus 30 squared over two. And that's everything. Y'all with me on where I'm getting this? And so now if you calculate Q dot, you get negative 62.4 times 10 to the third watts. You basically just get the, you get the difference between the 1,000, um, uh, the value of uh, 1,000 kilowatts that was measured and the value of 1,062 kilowatts that we calculated using that most simplified model. And even though we included the kinetic energy, we saw in part B that that's going to be pretty small, and it's small enough that it doesn't really affect the answer at all. Any questions about any of those? Okay, so that's a turbine. Um, so what are you, okay, so with a, um, so with nozzles and diffusers, what are the, what are the things you're exchanging? Uh, so those are changing, but in that in that most simplified model, um, these are worth keeping in mind um, just to sort of have an overall sense of what's happening with all these different devices. Um, with nozzles and diffusers, you're exchanging enthalpy for speed and vice versa. I guess it's,
and they'll wait. <laughs> I should remember this too. Oh yes, B. Yes. Okay, so a change in enthalpy is being used to produce a change in speed. Both nozzles and diffusers. Okay, so with the turbine, what are you exchanging and what's the enthalpy and work? Yep, and the turbine you're using to produce work. Yep. Where, yeah, did I say that? Yeah, that's worth looking into. Uh, where did I write that? Farther? Yes. Kilowatts. Any other question? Okay, so now we're going to talk about two things that are similar, but uh, you know, with nozzles and diffusers, we use the same simplified equation for both of them. Uh, these are sort of the same idea, but they're going to have each their own simplified equation. So I don't know. I'm going to keep them in the same section. So now we're going to talk about compressors and pumps. Um, compressors. are used to change the pressure in gases. And pumps are used to change the height of a liquid. Um, and the assumptions that we're going to make, a lot of these are going to be the same for, for compressors and pumps, but uh, there, there's going to be one assumption that we're only going to make for compressors and one that we're only going to make for pumps. So, you know, these are the common assumptions for both of these. Um, so first of all, we're going to assume that it's steady state. And that means the same thing it has in the last two cases. Uh, first, it means that the EDT is zero. And second, it means that the mass flow rate at the inlet it's the same as at the exit, so we'll just call it M dot. Uh, second, we're going to assume that the flow is fast enough and it's well insulated enough and the small enough surface area and stuff. That we can neglect the heat loss. And then the third one is for compressors only. Uh, 
um, we're going to um, assume that uh, the potential energy contribution is small. So we're going to say G times the difference in the heights is about equal to zero. And the fourth one is for pumps only. Well, we know we don't want to make that assumption for pumps. Uh, you know, we don't want to assume that the change in height is negligible because we're trying to do a calculation that involves changing the height of a liquid. Um, but we are going to assume that the change in temperature uh, and the change in pressure both about zero. And so what happens, uh, in what way does that affect the, um, the first law for control volumes if the temperature and pressure basically stay the same? Think about looking stuff up in a liquid table. What happens if, if, your, if the pressure stays the same in both cases and your temperature stays the same? And every property stays the same, including enthalpy. Yep. I have a question. I might have brought this up a time or two before, but this kind of stuff can get confusing. Um, the height is a property, right? The, the material has a height at a single instant. And obviously, enthalpy is a property. Um, how is it that, uh, how is it that we can't eliminate those two things just as soon as we know that it's steady state? Steady state says that there's no change in properties, right? So what's the difference between what I'm saying here and the fact that this whole time we've been eliminating other things, you know, the change in time, the change in energy with time and the mass flow rate. What's the difference? The difference is um, this is saying a difference in height and a difference in enthalpy spatially between the between the inlet and the exit okay um steady state means that there's no change over time so if you can have a steady state thing where there's a high enthalpy say at the inlet and a low enthalpy at the exit those just can't change in time spatially there can be a change okay so this is saying something different than steady state okay so, and that's something that, you know, you sort of have to keep that difference in mind with all this thermodynamic stuff. And it's going to be a big deal in heat transfer, um, the next class like this that you take. We're talking about two different uh, independent variables that, you know, that your functions can vary over. It can vary over space, over distance, and it can vary over time. And you have to deal with those differently, separately. Um, so let's go through a derivation for each of these two. Okay, so let's do compressors first. So this is the simplified form of the first law of volumes. For compressors. So we'll start out with the full first law for control volumes, DEDT. 
is equal to Q dot minus W dot for the control volume plus MI dot times the quantity HI plus L squared over two plus G VI minus M exit dot times the quantity HE plus VE squared over two plus GZE Um, so the first assumption we made is that it's steady state. That means this goes away. And each of these we're just going to call M dot. Second assumption is that uh, Q dot is equal to zero. So this goes away. Um, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Go back and write one more thing in here. Change this numbering. There was one more thing I wanted to talk about before we started talking, before we gave the two that are specific for compressors and pumps. So let's make, I know this will look ugly, but let's make this one number four, this one number five, and squeeze in a number three before. That's true for both of these two things. And we're going to assume that, um, that the change in uh, v squared over two is also negligible. We don't care much about those speeds. Um, if you think about uh, how fast air is flowing into an air compressor or coming out of an air compressor, or you think about how fast water is going into a water pump or out of a water pump, everything's moving pretty slowly, and those aren't going to be big terms compared to the other ones. Everyone with me on that? Okay, so what else can we, so we're talking about compressors now. Um, well, we know we're going to eliminate the um, kinetic energy terms. That would be for both of them. And then for compressors, we're not going to worry about the change in height, uh, partly because gases are a lot less dense. And so we'll this out. And so the simplified form for a compressor says W dot for the control volume is equal to M dot times the quantity enthalpy at the inlet minus enthalpy at the exit. for the turbine, uh, is that right? Yeah. I didn't notice that. Okay, so for a comp compressor, Um, we're exchanging enthalpy and work. Um, The difference is, so it's the same formula as a 
So it's the same simplified formula as for a turbine. But there's one dis difference when you use it. Um, what's the difference going to be? In a turbine, uh, you're going to have a high enthalpy at the inlet, a low enthalpy at the exit, and that's going to give you a positive W dot, which means that that turbine is doing work on the surroundings. Um, in the case of a compressor, you're going to have a low enthalpy at the inlet, high at the exit, you're going to get a negative W dot, and so that's saying, you know, you're going to, in order to cause this increase in pressure, you're going to have to put work into the system um, in the form of electrical work or whatever. Okay, so you're not using this to power an engine. You're using electricity or whatever to create this difference in pressures. Um, So WCV dot is negative. Um, because it takes work. to increase the pressure. And um, talking about, so you can think of a turbine as uh, your sort of input for the turbine is a difference in enthalpies, and you use that to produce work. In a compressor, your input is work, and you're using that to get a difference in enthalpies. I'm going to change this. You can do it or don't do it, but uh, for a compressor, you're exchanging uh, an enthalpy difference, you know, for okay. So now let's do the same thing for a pump. Okay, so let's call this the simplified first law for control volumes for pumps. Okay, so we're going to start with that full form. Uh, D D T is equal to Q dot minus W C V dot plus M inlet dot times the quantity H inlet plus V inlet squared over two plus G Z inlet minus M exit dot times the quantity H exit plus V exit squared over two plus G Z exit. Uh, it's steady state, so we get rid of D D T and the two mass flow rates we'll just call M dot. Um, we're going to assume that there's no significant heat loss. Um, we're going to assume that there's no significant contribution from kinetic energy. And then what's the last assumption that we make for a pump? 
enthalpy. That's right. So we assume that uh, there's not going to be a big change in temperature or pressure. And so uh, we're going to be in the same state. And so there's not a big change in enthalpy. And so all this together says W dot for the control volume is equal to M dot times the quantity GZ at the inlet minus GZ at the exit. And so for a pump, we're going to exchange uh, work height of the fluid, usually a liquid. Any questions about that? Okay, I think that's all the devices. So um, I'll give you a couple problems to work on and uh, that's gonna be it for this section. Any questions overall about any of this? Uh, maybe uh, sort of conceptual questions or anything like that that's confusing about this? Okay, so um, the thing is, in something can be in steady state and not be the same at every point. That's the key idea. You know, um, like if if there's a fire outside in the hallway, okay, and the wall over here is uh, held up to a, you know, say there's like a refrigeration system on the other side of this wall. This room could achieve steady state, okay? And it would be hot over on this side of the room and cold over on this side of the room. It still could be in steady state. Okay, the the overall like distribution of temperatures would be the same. Okay, and so steady state says at any point in the room things don't change over time. Okay, so if you went over here, you measure it at 200 degrees right here. 20 minutes later, it would still be 200 degrees, and over here it would be, you know. Degrees Celsius and 20 minutes later, still two degrees Celsius. As long as it's not changing over time, it, it can still be in steady state. So, what you have to think about is are we talking about differences between the inlet and the exit? That can occur in steady state, or are we talking about, uh, are we talking about um, how a state at a single instant changes over time? That can't happen in steady state. Yeah, anywhere. So like any of the properties at the inlet have to stay the same over time. Any properties at the exit have to stay the same over time, but that doesn't mean they can't be different than each other. Yeah, it just can't change. Yep. Any other questions? That's it.